When we look at the rise of the new monarchies in Europe, England in particular stands out. By the time of the end of the War of the Roses, Henry VII, who ends the war, basically sets himself up as a very powerful monarch. He ends the private armies, he introduces the Star Chamber, which was his own private sort of tribunal or court, and it becomes a very strong instrument in many ways of despotism in England. This allows for much greater power to the monarchy itself in England, and you'll see a consolidation of power within the realm of the king, even though Parliament will still have power, and especially the power of taxation. Now, in France, you see a little bit different. Louis XI also gains more power over taxation. He will control the French state. And where we see France is an, always in opposition to the Habsburgs. Now, to gain more taxation power, you see the beginning of what's called the Pragmatic Sanction. The Pragmatic Sanction allowed the French government to tax the church. Pope Leo X does not like that, so he works out a deal with Francis I, which is called the Concordat at Bologna, and it allows France to control the Catholic Church inside of France, all of the main types of positions, the abbots and the bishops, are now appointed by the French crown, instead of by the Pope. In return for that, France agreed not to tax the Catholic Church. In Spain, you see a different development. At be in the beginning of this, there is no real Spain, but the kingdoms of Aragon and Castile. Ultimately, you get a Spain with the offspring of Ferdinand and Isabella. Spain is a much more religious bent, and especially with the development of the crusade against the Muslim Moors, ends in the fall of Granada in 1492. In that same year, the Jews are also expelled from Spain. Now, these terms, of course, you need to know. The Moriscos are the Christians of Moorish background. The Maranianos are the Christians of Jewish background. Because Spain was supposed to be a society that was totally controlled by the state, what you begin to see is fear that these groups of Christians who had accepted Christianity even though they were Muslim or even though they were Jewish that they might not be totally loyal to the state and hence this is why you begin to see an inquisition in Spain that it is a fear that the country was not totally behind the Catholic Church now also in Spain you will get as well the Ferdinand and Isabella sent, or Isabella did in particular, Columbus out to discover new lands, hoping to discover Asia. This will initially begin to bring back more and more wealth to Spain, which will ultimately finance this Inquisition. Now the fourth of these countries is the Holy Roman Empire. And you can see from the map, the Holy Roman Empire encompasses much of what is today Central Europe, and especially Germany and most of what is Northern Italy, uh, and some of Eastern Europe as well. The Holy Roman Empire was neither holy nor Roman in a lot of ways. It was made up of three parts, the princely states, examples like Brandenburg, Saxony, Bavaria, etc., uh, the ecclesiastical states, which were church states, like Mons would be an example there. And then the imperial free cities. The free cities, which there, was, there were about 50, had gained their own charters away from any of the princely states or the ecclesiastical states, the church states. The Holy Roman Empire was made up of over 300 different countries. Some of them were smaller than the town in which you reside here, Hummelstown. Now, the Holy Roman Emperor was picked by seven electors of what were considered the seven most important uh, states. From the mid-1300s onward, the Holy Roman Emperor, with one small exception, came from the House of Habsburg. 
the House of Habsburg tries to centralize Germany under Habsburg control. This will put it into contention with both France and the German states, who will continually seek to block this from taking place. Many of the wars that we will talk about, especially the wars of religion, that on a political realm aren't religious, it deals with the blocking of Habsburg control over Germany. And for the first part of European history, this is a key component that you need to understand. Additionally with this, the Habsburgs, through marriage, will gain control of the largest European empire. In particular, not only do they control Austria, and to an extent the Holy Roman Empire, but they will also control Spain through marriage, the Netherlands, what is present-day Belgium, uh, Savoy on the coast of Italy and France on that borderline there. Much of Italy was under control of the Habsburgs. They become the most powerful state in Europe in this early time frame.